contestant number one, Kimberly Luba. My outfit is in appreciation to all nurses in the world today. The outfit I chose fits with the theme by giving appreciation to all nurses who work so hard and strong. Nurses serve as patient advocates by working to preserve the dignity of their patients by helping them to feel that they are a person as opposed to just a diagnosis. Nurses can help patients feel safer and more like a human. Contestant number one, Kimberly Luba. Contestant number two, Ella Schwank. For her theme wear, Ella chose to dress as a Plymouth High School cheerleader. I chose Plymouth High School cheerleader because PHS is divided between Rockies and Pilgrims, but cheerleading is the only sport that unifies the two. During football season, we cheer as the Rockies, but during basketball season, we are the Pilgrims. As cheerleaders, we encourage the fans to support the team while motivating the athletes to keep pushing. Ella believes that cheerleaders are the perfect example of unifying the community through appreciation of the game. Contestant number two, Ella Schwenk. <laughs> Contestant number three, Kikiana Haynes. I decided to dress as a teacher because as a teacher you educate generations that impact society. These generations of students have become police officers, nurses, Senators, all people who impact our everyday lives. A teacher is a unified leader who is underappreciated and unvalued and is, a, and is a community we need to appreciate how much teachers do. Contestant number three, Kikiana Haynes. <laughs> Contestant number four, Hannah Peacock. Hannah believes that the best way to unify our community through appreciation is to take our personal passion and turn that into compassion for others. Her personal passion is dance. She is wearing the costume she performed in at the Marshall County Neighborhood Center 2023 Dancing with the Stars, along with the charm bracelet she was given for participating. Hannah chose to help raise money for the center because she appreciates what they do for our community, including but not limited to a food pantry, a clothing closet, and holiday themed baskets for Thanksgiving and Christmas. None of us can do everything, but we can all do something to show appreciation for our leaders and join their efforts to make Marshall County a more unified community through love, respect, and compassion. Contestant number four, Hannah Peacock. Contestant number five, Sydney Shepherd. Sydney chose to unify her community by showing appreciation to Argus Community Schools as well as the Woodlawn Medical Professional Doctor's Office. Coming from a well fortified school helps put her on her future path of becoming a cardiothoracic surgeon. She would also like to show appreciation to the community's doctor office as they have always given student athletes an opportunity to have a free sports physical to allow them to pursue their sporting interests. Contestant number five, Sydney Shepard. Contestant number six, Hannah Long. Hannah's theme is Bremen's Fireman's Festival. I chose the festival as my theme because of the impact it has by bringing together alumni, friends, and families while providing a safe and fun environment for all. The Bremen Fire Department also sponsors Hoosier Burn, which is a nonprofit organization that helps victims of burns such as herself. Contestant number six, Hannah Long.
Contestant number seven, Lillian Kinderleiter. The Reese Theater first opened in 1940, but recently underwent many renovations and, after a temporary closing in 2009, reopened in 2022. The Reese Theater has since become a way for members of our community to get involved and showcase their talents. It has been exciting to see the Reese Theater become a spotlight of our community. Contestant number seven, Lillian Hinderleiter. <laughs> Contestant number eight, Cheyenne Hawley. Tonight, Cheyenne is representing Triton FFA by proudly wearing her official dress. Through FFA, Cheyenne has learned the importance of agriculture, what it takes to become a leader, and the value of hard work. Today, she wants to recognize all the farmers, egg ambassadors, producers, ranchers, and all the others that have made an impact on agriculture. They have made a huge impact not only in her life, but have helped shape Marshall County into what it is today. Contestant number eight, Cheyenne Hawley. Contestant number nine, Lena Huyan. For unifying our community by appreciation, Lena is dressed as our local farmer's market. I appreciate how the market brings our community together by providing a space for any business, no matter the size, product, or organization. It allows for our community to share a space to support our local small businesses and nonprofits. Altogether, I appreciate how the farmer's market allows for people in our community to reconnect and support each other no matter where they came from. All of the items in Lena's basket tonight came from our local farmer's market. Contestant number nine, Lena Huyen. Contestant number 10, Emily Hillman. Emily chose Culver's Lake Fest as her theme wear. She chose this because Lake Fest is one of the biggest community involved weekends of the year in Culver. It brings so many people together to be able to shop small and connect with each other. Lake Fest is Emily's favorite time of the year. Contestant number 10, Emily Hillman. Contestant number 11, Ruby Bickle. Ruby's theme wear is inspired by the Plymouth Christmas tree lighting and parade. Christmas time is one of my favorite times of the year, and getting to participate or watch the parade and then the tree lighting is very heartwarming. Seeing all the families get to share the Christmas spirit with each other is very special. Being able to watch all the little kids' faces light up when the tree is being turned on is truly a special moment. Contestant number 11, Ruby Bickle. <laughs> Contestant number 12, Lydia Hall. Lydia chose the Blueberry Festival for her theme wear because it is what makes her community special to her. Every year is inspiring to see the community come together and celebrate a tradition that makes our small town great. I would like to give a very big thank you to all the amazing people that make this event possible. The Blueberry Festival will always be a reminder of this great small town that I am proud to call home. Contestant number 12, Lydia Hall. Contestant number 13, 
Olivia Shively. What Olivia thinks shows her community unity the best is the standard. The standard is the center of the community and a place where everyone comes to connect with friends and family through ice cream and a friendly face. Longtime members of the community have built this business which has had a great impact on its success. Contestant number 13, Olivia Shively. <laughs> Contestant number 14, Addison Beers. Where do you gather under the lights on a Friday night? Where can you hear the roar of a crowd and the smell of popcorn? Our town gathers to support our local athletes in our gyms and on our fields. It feels like the whole community comes and gathers in one space. It brings out our passion, excitement, fun, and creates lasting memories. The next day at our local coffee shop, everyone is reliving the highlights, suspenseful moments, and scores. I love how these community events bring us all together and unifies us as one. Contestant number 14, Addison Beers. <laughs> Contestant number 15, Anna McIntyre. Anna had the opportunity to serve the Marshall County community through Triton Gives Back, a community service event organized by the Triton School Corporation. This event fosters a sense of appreciation and connection with the community by allowing all students, faculty, and staff to join together for a day of service. Anna enjoyed working on projects over the past four years, including cleaning up the Plymouth Park, wrapping gifts for blessings in a backpack, raking leaves, and planting flowers for various organizations in Marshall County. Through her active involvement in this event, Anna embodied the spirit of community appreciation and demonstrated the importance of giving back to those in need. She will take this to the next level as she plans to pursue a degree in nursing so she can continue to serve the community in the future. Contestant number 15, Anna McIntyre. <laughs> Contestant number 16, Brooke Vermillion. Brooke is from the small town of Walkerton, Indiana, so she chose to represent the Halloween Festival. Walkerton hosts the Halloween Festival every year in the fall. During the festival, the local churches make baked goods to sell, local musicians sing for the town to hear, and the high school has booths set up to receive donations to their individual clubs. The Halloween Festival also raises scholarship money that they give back to the seniors who have volunteered throughout their high school career. Brooke has volunteered throughout her high school years. The Halloween Festival has raised $550,000 since 2009. She chose to wear a Halloween volunteer shirt and hold this year's Halloween yard sign as her theme wear. The Halloween Festival is a time when the whole family community comes together to enjoy the rides, spend time with family, and help volunteer at the festival. Contestant number 16, Brooke Vermillion. If I could ask all the contestants to please come back on stage so we can get one more look at your theme wear. This portion of the pageant shows each contestant's creativity and ability to create a connection with this year's theme of unifying our community through appreciation. Theme work counts for 30% of the contestant's score. There is also a $100 cash prize for the contestant with the best theme wear. The winner will be announced at the end of the evening. The contestants were asked to write why their outfit represents the theme and why their choice is important to them. Let's give them one more round of applause.
Thank you very much, ladies. You can go on and change to your formal wear. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, if it seems like I'm stretching, I am. The girls need to change from what they, you just saw them in to formal wear. And there's renovations going on here at Argus, so they got a little bit of a trek to get to the room to change. So, I apologize now if you think I'm dragging it out and not doing it on purpose. While the young ladies change, I would like to introduce the 2023 Board of Directors from the Marshall County Blueberry Festival. These are the folks that make the festival happen. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't all be here. So board members, please stand when I read your names so you may be properly recognized. Dwayne Culp, President. Rick Vanza, Vice President. Jackie Lunetta, Secretary. Larry Curtis, Treasurer. Emily Bowser. Greg Ferguson. Larry Falstitch. Jenny Grindle. Robin Hammonds. Brent Jones, Shannon King, Leanne Center, Travis Thompson, Carrie Banza, and the woman that tries to corral all of those people. Tracy Puyan, Festival Coordinator. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the 2023 Scholarship, Scholarship Pageant Committee for all their hard work. Now they're mostly in the back trying to get 16 girls in dresses, so I'm just going to run through it and then we'll hold our applause till the end. The members of the committee are Jackie Lunetta, Lois Trowbridge, Vicki Meyer, Cassie Quissel, Karen O'Neill, Emily Bowser, Ann Bowser, Jayla Faulkner, Courtney Jones, Alexis Lunetta O'Keefe, and Carrie Banza. We would also like to thank the crew from Argus High School who make all of this come together under the direction of Austin Mills. I would also like to take a moment to, for a special thank you to Leanne Center who puts in hours of choreographing, producing, and directing of the pageant. 2023 marks Leanne's 29th year at working to produce and direct the pageant. She is also the chairman of the scholarship pageant for 2023. So let's talk a little bit about Blueberry. So what is Blueberry all about? Located in north central Indiana, Central Park in Plymouth will come alive with the 56th, is it 56 or 7? 57th? Thank you. The 57th annual Marshall County Blueberry Festival held over Labor Day weekend. The Blueberry Festival is one of the Midwest's premier events and has been named the top 100 events in Northern America by the American Business Association in 1997, 99, and again in 2007. In 1966, the Plymouth JCs organized a Labor Day celebration for Marshall County to observe Indiana's sesquicentennial. This celebration was so successful, a group of citizens formed a board of directors to organize an annual festival. With Marshall County providing one-third of Indiana's blueberry crop at the time, the board chose to call the festival the Marshall County Blueberry Festival. Who knew this humble celebration would grow to be Indiana's largest four-day festival? The Blueberry Festival's main objectives are to provide quality family activities at little or no cost and a venue for Marshall County's many not-for-profit organizations to raise funds. 
Most organizations that participate are able to generate all of their operating funds in just that one weekend. To give you a small preview of this year's event, here are some of the things that have been planned for your enjoyment on Labor Day. There'll be a lot of people that are excited about this one. The second annual Blueberry Beer Garden. Last year's Blueberry Beer Garden was such a success that we are adding to it. Once again, we will be on the north end of the park, just off Plymouth Goshen Trail, but it's expanding. The cornhole tournament will be held at the beer garden this year. Come down beforehand and practice your cornhole skills on our boards so you can join the competition on Sunday. This year, there's no need to rush home for the Notre Dame game. We will have a big screen TV for you to watch it right in the park. The hours of the beer garden have been extended and will be open Thursday from 5 p.m. to midnight, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 11 a.m. to midnight, and Monday, 12 noon to 5 p.m. With a family-friendly atmosphere, music, food, TV, and cornhole, the beer garden is the place to be when you are ready to relax a bit after taking in all the exciting things the festival has to offer. Blueberry Hank got a new house. Well, he's getting a new house. We are in the process of having a new building put in place where Information Booth 2 was in the park. With the help of a grant and generous sponsors, we are able to replace Information Booth 2 this year and add a permanent residence for Hank on the opposite end of the booth. The new building will stand in the same place as the old one near the car Kitty Carnival Rides. Be sure to stop by Information Booth 2, purchase a blueberry souvenir, spend some time with Hank, and check out his new digs. Team Zoom Canine Entertainment Team will be performing at the Blueberry Festival. Zoom is a dog variety show that not only wows crowds, but keeps them in stitches the whole time. Their furry rescue dog comedians love to make crowds laugh while performing amazing feats of agility that entertain groups of all ages. From flying through the air to catch a frisbee disc to showing off agility skills by darting through an obstacle course, their canine athletes perform the most amazing tricks their stunt dogs love to get the crowd involved as well, so be ready to be a part of the show with spectator games. Team Zoom will be performing throughout the festival in the kids' area in the front of the park. Be sure to catch one of their shows. You won't be disappointed.